Hi, fish people, and welcome back to my Brackish Aquarium. I'm sorry it's been a little while since I've uploaded, but it's been a long, hot, busy summer so far. I'm trying to keep this channel on point and trying to keep it on the topic of the fish tank and my experiment with the brackish water and the fish I get from the lagoon down the street. So, as you've been following, I've been trying to get this moved over to a larger tank. Uh, to do so, I need to build a stand, and to get you into my shop, I really need to keep this on point and on topic. Um, there's a lot going on in my shop. As you'll see as I start the video of the production of the stand, um, I'm also going to show you the stand I built uh, for my wife uh, in the living room for her 55-gallon tank. Uh, it's really nice. Uh, it's like a bar as well. It's really cool. So, I've been busy trying to get this done and uh, keep this on topic. Um, but um, one of my main concerns, um, if you've been following, is the quality of the water I get from the lagoon. Obviously, um, if you were to make a saltwater tank in your home, or a brackish water tank in your home, you would use the finest quality water and the finest salts and the additives that would make it uh, the absolute perfect conditions for your uh, high dollar um, fish that you got from the pet store. But this is nature, and I get this water from the lagoon. Um, um, and it is has everything in it that we give uh, them. So in the summer, the water gets to a degree of very high nitrogen and there's fish kills. Uh, this hasn't happened yet this summer so far, but I'm starting to already have some problems. Um, one of the main problems is the water clarity. Um, it, it is amazing how clear the water gets in this tank. Um, if you've been following along, there's a Whisper 60 filter in here for a 60 gallon tank, and this is a 10 gallon tank. Uh, it has an adjustable flow, so I, this isn't a maelstrom in there, but um, it is turned up pretty good, and um, it does filter the water pretty clear. Uh, the tan and color in nature is the thing that it clears out. Um, what I really can't do is keep a number on the nitrogen. Um, I do have a pretty good idea of what's going on just because of the amount of growth I'm getting. Um, normally I get this green uh, algae you see there um, on the coral head um, and it'll get to a length to eventually it breaks off and it gets sucked into the filter. Um, it's been happening a bit more. But what I'm getting now is if you can see on this rock here is a bit of like a fuzz and um, also, you know, when I put the water in there, normally, it takes about 45 minutes for the water to clear up. And that's just not the tannin color, but also a white cloudiness. Where now, um, the tannin color goes away pretty quick, but the cloudiness will last sometimes a day. Uh, so I am having some issues. Um, I've been threatening to buy a saltwater test kit uh, for a long time now. Uh, so I did. I broke down and I got one of these. Um, this isn't the best um, scientific test kit you'll ever find, but it will give me a base uh, to see what's going on uh, with my tank. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, um, the water's been in here. I do change the water about every five to seven days. I take my five gallon bucket and I either walk or drive down to the lagoon and uh, I fill it about three quarters of the way full, put the lid on it, and I change it out. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to test the water in my tank as it's been in here for the maximum, which is around, you know, seven days. Um, I'll do that tomorrow morning, and I will go get the water, and I'll test the water in the lagoon, and I will also test the water after I do my water change. So we'll have some fun with that. Um, I figure that'll keep us busy, uh, some things like that, uh, while I work on the stand for the larger tank, and then we can have some fun moving all that over. Um, I'm sorry it's been taking a while, but it has been a long, uh, hot summer so far, and I'm, a lot going on, I'm sure everyone understands. Uh, we'll, again, stay on topic of the fish tank. 
so that'll be fun. Uh, we'll take care of that. Um, also, um, I've got a lot of great advice and a lot of great questions from you guys. Uh, one of the things is my, um, if you notice my sheep's head in here, uh, he's great, you know, and uh, I guess his girlfriend, um, you know, they didn't grow and they weren't getting any bigger. And I was wondering why. So one of the viewers said, hey, uh, you know, those are sheep's head minnows. And that's like a species, you know, that's as big as they get. Which makes sense because they've been in here for like three, four months and they haven't gotten any bigger. <laughs> you know, I I'm not great with the names and the Latin names of all the fish, which is kind of funny because I speak Latin <laughs> and I speak a lot of the Latin languages, but I'm really not that good at it. Um, I do know that the fish, they I can tell you where they come from. They all come from the lagoon down the street from my home. And uh, they're all doing really good. Uh, one of the questions also I got, which kind of stumped me because I did look it up, is my gambusia. I have a male and a female gambusia in there. Um, if you followed from the beginning, I had like 17 of them in there. Just they were like my canaries to see if this would work. And I actually built a small uh, fish trap to get them out. You can check out that video. It was pretty funny. So uh, the answer to your question is what kind of gambusia are they? And the answer is... I don't know. Uh, there's there's a few different ones, and I'm going to look it up, and I'm going to nail it down, uh, but I guess it's a common gambusha. <laughs> but like I said, you know, there, there's a, the crown conch. I can tell you what those are. Um, my um, gobies, so you know, they call those ghost gobies. Uh, you know, I, I could go on with all the Latin names and all the scientific uh, things of them, but... I don't find it that important. Um, you know, I've got uh, Gambusia. I've got the um, tons of different crabs. And, uh, you know, to talk about the crabs, too, um, the flounder have disappeared off the radar. Um, one of the main reasons is because of the crabs. Um, There's about five different species of crabs in here, and two of them have gotten large. And when I say large... I mean, uh, I'll get some video of him and I'll show you him. He's about this, his body without his arms, about the size of a silver dollar. And he's getting dangerous. So, you know, in nature, the flounder and that crab wouldn't hang out in such close quarters. But in here they did and he's got them. Um, also, I don't know if he was the end to all the uh, fun to watch hermit crabs. Um, or maybe uh, it was because the hermit crabs didn't have any larger shells to grow into. But he's gotten them as well, and they're all gone. Um, you know, uh, which is kind of a good idea of what I could keep and what I can't keep. When I move over the larger tank, what's, you know, good to keep and what's just going to get eaten. Um, the little shrimps, uh, the smaller ones uh, get eaten up. The larger ones do fine. So I still have a lot of shrimp in here. Um, since summer's come along and I want to move over to larger tank, I haven't gotten any new species or, you know, any replenish the tank at all. So uh, it's amazing to see how long ago shrimp have lasted. Um, with all that, um, welcome back. And um, I'll start posting on a regular basis again now that um, I've got my feet a little bit back on the ground and a little handle on um, how busy I have been. And uh, we'll get back to some brackish water fish tank experiment fun. Uh, because I'm enjoying myself. I hope you are. Um, you know, this, this tank is on my desk in my office at home. So I'm here with it all the time. I'm always messing with it and having some fun. So um, I hope everyone's having fun and I hope you're okay. And uh, tune in and we'll have some more fun. We'll do some neat groovy things. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Bye.